What's up and welcome to Party Invite, where we invite you to a gaming community of inclusiveness and diversity. Your party members tonight are Thomas Egan. Yo, yo, yo. How's it going? Debbie Hill. Hello, my friends. And I am Carlos Gomez. Uh, today we are missing our fellow party mem member, Chris Mowry, because uh, he's off uh, doing some gentlemanly stuff. Um, and knowing <laughs> that, <laughs> knowing that, uh, and the fact that you're listening to this podcast or watching not quite a week before Valentine's Day, uh, we thought it'd be a good time to discuss some of our favorite uh, games to play during this time of year, whether that's a game that you love to play alone or uh, something you'd like to do co-op with your significant other, or even a game that sparks joy and the tender affection you might hope to expect for this uh, complicated holiday. <laughs> so, in all honesty, this is a, a wide-open topic um, that has a whole lot of possibilities, but you guys might have some needs during this, this trying time, uh, and we're here to fill them uh, figuratively. Oh, jeez. Oh, or literally. Right. I mean, you know, that's fine. Man, y'all, y'all are spicy. This Valentine's is... Day is coming up, and pff, you guys are just getting ready, aren't you? It's it's that kind of podcast this time. That's right. <laughs> chocolate. I remember chocolate. <laughs> uh, before that, though, uh, we do have to uh, catch up a little bit on what we're playing. Devi, what have you been up to? Um, I've actually been playing a lot more Splatoon two lately. I figured let me get back into like the highest ranks that I used to be in. I used to be in, like at the upper echelon of x rank because i'm a professional squid and not a kid um <laughs> so i've been playing a lot of that and i remember why i stopped playing now because oh, no. oh yeah oh yeah it's a lot of fun the music is okay splitting when i think i had better music it's a lot of fun it's action-packed high octane but the teammates the teammates are the absolute worst <laughs> yeah you gotta you gotta go in with the squad you know yeah well it's different because you can't really just queue up at the same time as your friends without going into like the league battle mode um That's which is true. something i thought they would have rectified by now but i guess they might be saving that for maybe splatoon 3 i'm not sure mm -hmm. um but it would be a lot better if the communication in the game was better there's only like three pings in there which is ouch for when you die which is basically a way of letting the team know where you died so if like somebody's flanking then they'll oh let me turn around and take care of that threat which mm -hmm. no one does by the way yeah. um, <laughs> There's Booyah, which is basically saying, nice, which accomplishes yeah. nothing. <laughs> and then there's this way, which is like, you know, come over here, which, again, no one listens to. So, I mean, it's, it's fun. It's fun, but it's frustrating. I think the fun outweighs the frustration, though, for me. Um, just the yeah. colorful, the colorful violence. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and just, it's, it's so good and deep. Play it if you can. It's still on sale, I think, because it's been on sale for like a year, basically. Other than that, I've been playing Rogue Company. I wanted to try out the new Kestrel character that came out and also take a look at their Battle Pass system uh, that they just released for Season 1. Kestrel seems complicated. She's like a duelist character, so like her guns are really strong. Um, they have really interesting recoil and spread, though, so it's going to take some getting used to if you're not used to anything like that. I would most liken her, her long-distance weapon to be like Soldier 76 from Overwatch, where it like recoils upward. Mm -hmm. um, and it has like a pretty big spread for as long as you hold down the trigger. Um, but her Q is what really confuses me the most because it's like six homing drones that you look at a target, right? And then you click Q and all six drones launch at that target, no matter where it is. So it's not like a lock on. It doesn't lock onto like targets. That, so like if the target is moving, it won't like follow. It locks onto the reticle at time of activation. Hmm. So... I would assume it's really good for objective control. So if you're like launching it at someone who's trying to hack the the bomb or whatever, that's dangerous. But I really can't think of do much the, practical use otherwise. Do the drones hang out? How do what do they do? So they basically are launched one at, like subsequently, one after another. Mm -hmm. So six drones just launch right at the at the location at the time of activation. I mean, what do they do? Do they explode? Do they just they bonk do explode, somebody? Yes. Okay. They, yeah, they explode. It's a very small radius, and I don't think they do a lot of damage on their own. But if you can manage to land multiple ones, then the damage is pretty big. I think in training mode, the dummies die to two drones hitting. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But then again, they only travel in that straight line from where you're looking. They don't, like, home in or lock on or anything like that. So 
I mean, it could be a good finisher. Game. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, finishers, depending on how quickly they go, maybe for zoning, like just cut off a whole doorway and then go, you know, even if it stops them for a couple seconds. I mean, a couple seconds can be the difference sometimes. But I don't know. I haven't seen it in action. Uh, it's funny when characters come out. Uh, I, I always talk about how I really liked Winston in Overwatch because mm-hmm. when he first came out, I was like, this is the wo- this is the worst character. I, it, everything he has is terrible. Why would anyone use this character? But they put him in the game for a reason. So I was like, well, I guess I'm going to try to find out what that reason is because he wouldn't have made it all this way if he was just bad. Uh, so sure enough, I figured out how to get good at him. And since other people also had no idea how he worked, they couldn't fight against me. Um, that kind of made it fun because then I was like the one decent Winston in the whole game, <laughs> uh, which was which was kind of novel. Uh, and of course, everybody knows how Winston works who's been playing for a long time now. But um, there's something nice when new characters come out in any game when that learning curve is still pretty new and everyone's figuring out how stuff works. Uh, that's That's like something you definitely miss when you visit a game that's been around for a super long time. Um, you also only, since you only get it with new characters, uh, it's something that you can only talk about with people as it's happening. There's not a lot of, like, I can tell you that playing Winston was fun, but there's no, there's none of that, like, theory crafting. That's a right. really fun element of being on the learning curve, like on the cutting edge. Uh, but the yeah. zeitgeist, as you always put it. The zeitgeist. Zeitgeist <laughs> is fun. Honestly, the zeitgeist is what you're really it's- paying for when you buy new content. Um, the ability to talk about something at the same time that everyone else is learning about it. Uh, well, that's cool. What's that character called? So that's in Rogue Company. Uh, Kestrel. Yeah, her name is Kestrel. Kestrel. She's like of, of Indian heritage. Mm-hmm. Well, cool. And we're supposed to hear more about her, I believe, uh, upcoming with more of the season pass, or not season pass, um, battle pass stuff. Um, it's pretty easy to rank up in that surprisingly um, yeah i think that that winter event that they had where you just played and earned like those winter rewards i think that was their way of testing out the battle pass system mm-hmm. and from what it seems they learned a lot from it because it's pretty good cool yeah still don't really have to put money into the game i i put i put ten dollars into it and that's like 40 or 50 hours in so that's awesome yeah cool. i I've definitely put that amount in there. <laughs> Times a couple. Yeah. And a couple of good. <laughs> a couple more. And, a co- and how that's many skins get me, you get okay? for that? I, I mean, that's the quickest way to my wallet is cosmetics. It gotta look good. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Thomas, what have you been playing? Uh, what have I been playing? So we started uh, as of as of this podcast releasing. It would have been the last weekend. I played Donut County. We played that as our first official party invite uh, brunch special, Party of One. Um, that's something you can expect on Saturdays or Sundays from somebody in the crew. And I played Donut County. I beat it all in one sitting, which was cool. I got a bunch of glowing recommendations for it from a bunch of people, including you, Carlos. Uh, that was exactly what I was hoping it would be. Um, you know, of course, it's like an IO game. It's a eat stuff and get bigger and then eat bigger stuff kind of game. Um, it's such a simple gameplay loop, and I love that gameplay loop. <laughs> I just, it's so simple. I mean, it's exactly what you want it to be, and it's very satisfying. Uh, and that game is especially good at making you have a good time because there are times where the whole, the idea is you're in Donut County. USA, and uh, you're basically going around. There's this funny, this charming story with these funny characters and a bunch of like fun flavor text. But you control a little hole that eats things and people and buildings, and you get bigger and bigger. Um, there'll be times where the hole is yay big, and it looks like you're maybe just not quite big enough to eat something, but the game's like, ah, that's fine. You're big enough. You're big enough. And just wiggle it a little bit. Yeah, just wiggle a little bit and you'll get it. And I really appreciate that as somebody who's played a bunch of games like this. Um, there's there's a very it's it's just it's not quite frustrating, but it's close to it. 
where you think you're big enough to get something and you, you can almost get it and you spend a lot of time trying to get it until you finally give up and get, you know, eat something else and get a tiny bit bigger and then you come back to it and you're able to do it. Uh, this game seems to have realized that that's not very fun and it, it, you know, it circumvented it. It just completely was like, look, you, you're close enough, get in there. And that happened enough times that uh, I would say it's like, that's a really small thing, but it's constantly happening. And I would say that's what makes this a great IO game or whatever this genre is called. Um, I really enjoyed it. I laughed a lot. Um, great soundtrack, good visuals. It's a good game. Um, I probably beat it in two and a half hours. That sounds right. Yeah, it's like perfect size game. Like the length is absolutely perfect. It's one of the funniest games. And then there's there's not really any barriers to it. The whole story is just fun. And it, mm -hmm. it knows that you're here for fun. You're not here for a challenge. And even when you failed the boss fight, like it was, it made the whole game better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I appreciated that. Um, I, I'm glad that you told me to to fail the boss fight the first time because of the extra little scene we got to see. That was so funny. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> so that was a really good time. So that was Donut County. Uh, we have the video up on YouTube. And uh, I highly recommend either watching it or going and playing it yourself. I really like that game. Uh, the other game I've been playing, well, that I've played once, uh, is State of Decay 2. I played that with two other people in our community. Um, it is on Game Pass. I booted it up for the first time. Um, so two of us were first timers. And uh, our third was, he, he's beaten the game all the way through. He's done DLC and all this stuff. But he started a new character with us. Um, so the two most important things about this game. Number one, it's fun. I played the first game, and it's very similar to the first game. Um, I played that on Xbox 360. Had a good time. So first, it's fun. Second, it is janky. It is real janky. Um, there are... You're, you're trying to walk into your base, and the NPCs that hang out there block the door. And you just... <laughs> you can't move them. You, like, you can spend a lot of time trying to vault around them, but probably you just need to go find another entrance. <laughs> Um, some goofy stuff like that. Uh, zombies walking around, but their model is just moving. Like their legs aren't moving or anything. t -pose, please. Yeah. Uh, and just some goofy stuff like that. It really, it plays like a game that was made in the mid 2000s. Um, which, which surprised me because it's made by Microsoft Studios. It's not an indie game. Yeah. I think. Uh, so I was surprised that it was so janky, but honestly, the game was fun enough that uh, that I had a good time. You can have up to four people in a game. In the first game, it was all single player, uh, but the second game, you can either do single player and build your own community, or you can invite your friends to join your uh, to bring uh, characters from their community and help build yours. So uh, here's where it kind of gets hung up, where I really wish that this was different, like fundamentally different, you have a host for your game. So you have uh, a host. Uh, we were playing with Lord Chrome. He was our host. Um, you are tethered to him. You can split up to a degree. If you go to the same group of houses, you can all go to different houses. But if he goes to that section of the map and I try to go the other way, the game will alert you that, hey, you're about to go too far. And if you go too far, it'll just beep. It'll reload you right on your friend, right on the host. <laughs> uh, so at one point, they were across like a canyon. And I was dealing with these zombies in the house and stuff. And I was trying to like do my own thing and attack this horde, which was pretty tough. But I did have a vehicle to run them down with, uh, which was satisfying. So I was doing all that. And I wanted to keep looting the house. But the game was like, ah, sorry, like this isn't a free roam game. Uh, and it threw me back. It loaded me into his, his vehicle across the map. Um, so it, it definitely wants you to stick together. And when you stick together, it is fun. But I really did want to just be able to split up gang and go do our own independent things if we wanted to. So I was surprised that they designed it that way. Uh, the, the last thing with that host gig is that the host is the only one who can upgrade the home base. 
which makes sense. Uh, but as a non-host character, especially when they're new, like me, um, it's not clear what you're supposed to be doing. The game will give you icons and interactions that are really meant for a host, not for me, not for someone who can't actually activate the thing or install this this mod or this upgrade. Uh, there was stuff like that where I kept thinking that I was just doing stuff wrong, but I wasn't. It's just that I they shouldn't have designed the game for me to see that. They should have been like, hey, your host needs to come over here and press this button. Um, so, so it, it's, I had a really good time. I'm looking forward to playing a lot more of that game. I just didn't expect it to be so rough around its many, many edges. That is kind of weird. Yeah. They do kind maybe of treat it like a, an maybe ongoing Maybe it's like thing. just in the state of decay. No! Oh! <laughs> uh... <laughs> so the, the state of decay name is obviously a reference to the zombies, but, um, mm -hmm. if the second game is anything like the first game, and I have no idea if it is, uh, that that title is really a play on the fact that when you are not playing, time is still passing in your game oh, yeah. based on your uh, clock on your console or on your PC. Cool. Um, so you'd log in and time would have passed, and it's like, hey, since you left, these two people are hungry, one guy went missing, but also <laughs> uh, a survivor showed up or something. But at the same time, you can lose all your shit without even being, like, playing, right? Uh, well, there are... You won't just lose, like, a lot of stuff. I mean, things will be dwindled, but it's not going to be dwindled to the point where it's like, oh, you left your Tamagotchi alone too long and it died. <laughs> um, the longer you're away, the, you know, the worse things are going to be, the more unattended things are going to be, but it's diminishing returns, so if you don't play for six months it's not just going to be like oh everybody's dead <laughs> oh dear so it's kind of like I, i'm picturing it like a fusion between like borderlands kind of host thing where there's one host that hosts the lobby except for it's more restrictive because in borderlands you can basically do whatever you want as long as you're in the same area mm -hmm. but if the host tries to like move areas like if you're going from like the town to like the open yeah through one of the whatever, like portal loading screens yeah you'll all be moved there Mm -hmm. um, it sounds like if they opened it up a little bit more for the, the sequel, it would be a lot better. Yeah, uh, because it is, it's a, an open world map, and it's also randomly generated, so oh, the exploration element is always there. You, don't lo you never just know the map already. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, the people who like this game seem to like it a lot, and I'm now one of those people. I hope that they make a third one. I have no idea if that's a realistic expectation. Um, but it'd be cool if they did. Yeah, it's totally in the works. Cool. Then uh, if they do that, I am looking forward to a version of this where you can just... With, with more robust multiplayer is, is all there is to it. It seems like the core game, they know what's there. They just, you know, need to spend some more time and money on it. Um, I hope <laughs> that the first two have done well enough that the third one would would sell really well. Well, if they are making a third one, they better watch the release window because Back for Blood's going to be coming out soon, and we don't want a yeah. whole Battleborn Overwatch situation again. Yeah, yeah. Man, I forgot about Battleborn. Rip. You just closed its servers, Resto and Pesto. Yeah. Sad day for some. Yeah. Just like Valentine's Day. Oh. <laughs> we're gonna. We're just gonna bring it back every time. That's right. <laughs> uh, as for me. Uh, as for me, I've been playing a little bit of everything as usual, but I decided to get my 2DS XL out and start Pokemon Crystal because uh, I, I never finished it. Uh, as a kid, I, I played Gold. Um, gold? And just Yeah. <laughs> I kind of was red version stuff for a little while, and then I, I switched up. So sorry, Dev. <laughs> but <laughs> Crystal is I, I know for a fact that Crystal is the better option. So um yeah, just getting into that in my, my downtime and then the the more serious gameplay stuff. Um obviously everything that's on Game Pass. Uh, Cyber Shadow just showed up. Uh that's the, the newest Yacht Club games uh title. Uh it's pretty good. It's very much a modern day ninja guy done. Oh, yeah. Uh in, in the old style. Uh really fun. Uh, very smooth gameplay. The the cutscenes legit are so close to the original Ninja Gaiden cutscenes. It's hilarious. Um, 
very uh very tongue in cheek kind of story so far. Uh super sci fi ninja gaiden, that's that's pretty much it. There's it's it's not difficult yet. I will uh I'll talk more about it when I get to the final levels, I'm sure, because it's probably gonna be it's gonna be pretty tough at that point. Um also I do have to say before we get to the the V Day topic, um I do have to apologize to the creators of Haven, uh the game bakers. Uh-oh. Uh not entirely, but at least partially. Um <laughs> Haven I I went back to it. Um and I am sitting at just about twenty hours. I completed the game over the weekend and it's fantastic. Uh I have plenty more to say on it later. Um but when I said before that it wasn't capturing my interest, it didn't for a little bit. Um but I, I decided to push through it, got a couple more hours in and it started hitting me. And for anybody that's uh that hasn't picked it up on Game Pass, uh or uh it actually came out on Switch today. If I remember correctly, then hmm. uh, I I can't uh, I can't recommend it enough. It's really good. Okay. Um, but I'll, I'll get into the depth of that later. <laughs> um, and I, I also downloaded way too many other things like uh, Final Fantasy, which ones? Uh, eight. Um, Final Fantasy Eight on Game Pass. The Falcon Year just came out. Downloaded that. I have way too many things to play. Uh, apparently, Monster Hunter World is on the cloud version of Game Pass now, so Wait, really? I look forward to that. Yeah, I've got to try that out tonight, actually. Okay, because the, <laughs> the demo for Monster Hunter Rise is like over now, and like I need, mm-hmm. I need the need filler. <laughs> like, <laughs> I need, yeah. Gotta scratch my itch. Like Rise rebirthed my love for Monster Hunter that generations uh, had instilled in me, and now, now I'm just just. Need my fix, you know. Just... <laughs> just <push, push. laughs> Y'all got any more than than Monster Hunters? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I, I definitely suggest uh, checking that out. Um, it it is one of those AAA titles that I question how good it's gonna play on stream, but uh, when uh, when I know, you guys will know for sure. Oh, you said like cloud, as in like. What Control did for the Nintendo Switch, where you like stream it directly? Is that what you mean? Uh, you no, can... no, it's it's X Cloud. So, oh, uh, okay. the Game Pass X Cloud, yeah. So it is available for anybody that has Ultimate. Cool. Ooh. Um, so if you guys are ready, we have a Valentine's Day topic to talk about. Heck yeah! Uh, uh, before we get so, into that, I yeah. do want to ask, who did you choose as your starter in Pokemon Crystal? I have to know. <laughs> uh, I chose Totodile. Oh, fun. Uh, because my I have a stupid amount of hours in Pokemon X and Y, and I made um, I have a Typhlosion that's like level ninety six, I think, that I love with every fiber of my being. I can't give her up. So I love Typhlosion so much. <laughs> yeah, so I I'm gonna get gonna get that for Alligator Line uh, in this playthrough. So there you go. Is Crystal like the fiery red version of? <laughs> Of gold? Of gold and so, silver? No. You know how red and blue had like the yellow version that was like a, basically an expansion? Mm-hmm. That's what crystal is. Oh. Mm-hmm. I, so it's like I the thought... gold and silver version, but like enhanced. <laughs> I thought crystal was one of two, like, you know, like an mm-hmm. X and Y or a. You know what? My brother's probably explained that to me like six times. He, <laughs> he has played so much Pokemon. I, in fact, I guarantee if he heard this right now, he'd just be like, you fool. <laughs> <laughs> it also was the first one to introduce uh, choosing your character's gender. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. A lot of firsts in Crystal, actually. It's it's gonna be a good time, and it's ten bucks on the eShop, so why not get that little bit of nostalgia? Do it, and then start out with Chikorita, the best one. <laughs> so our Valentine's Day topic <laughs> again. These are games that uh, you might enjoy alone. You might enjoy with a partner, or uh, maybe it's just something that gets you in the feels that uh, Valentine's Day normally does do. Um, so, Thomas, what are your picks? Uh, so my picks, I have a... Um, I, I don't know how you... Well, whatever, I'm just going to tell you what I have. Uh, I have a single-player one that you can either play by yourself or you can play and have your partner watch. It's definitely a single-player game, but it is a, uh, an experience that you both can enjoy for sure. Uh, that one is Sayonara Wild Hearts. 
that is a game that uh, the first time I ever saw it, I watched Cam Koenig play that uh, on his stream, and he was very excited. He was he loves rhythm games and all that stuff, and uh, he just was gushing all over this game. And I watched it, and I was like, well, it looks cool. It looks <laughs> it looks and it sounds great, but I don't really understand why Cam is over the moon about it. Uh, and I ended up playing it uh, later on after a yet another friend's who I really didn't expect to recommend the game to me. Um, he's like, you got to play this. You can beat it in one sitting and you should. Uh, it's short enough that you, if you can, if you can play for like an hour and a half, maybe, uh, beat it in one sitting. That's the way to play this game. Anyway, this game is uh, the loose story of someone. Oh, gosh, how it's even been a while since I played this. Uh, basically, a woman coming into their own, um, overcoming obstacles to discover who they are and uh, develop confidence, among other um, wonderful attributes. <laughs> uh, there are a bunch of levels to this, and each have different mechanics, but basically, it's a runner game. It is Your character is moving in a direction, and the way that that uh, shows itself is very different on each level and in between levels. Um, in one level, you're driving a car. In one level, you're almost flying around Star Fox style. In another one, you're uh, riding an animal. Um, but in each one, you're navigating, you're trying to avoid obstacles, but collect coins, basically. The coins um, will, getting enough coins will let you pass the level, but uh, it's just very satisfying to collect those coins because they hit in rhythm with the music because the music is the crux of this thing. Uh, you've got beautiful visuals and, and good controls and all this, but the music in this, uh, in this game is great. It's kind of a poppy synth kind of thing. Um, it has Queen Latifah narrating it, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and it's wonderful. It, that game is a snack. Uh, you can you can really have a great time playing it, but you could also I mean I enjoyed watching my friend also play it um, without like yeah, yeah I did want to play it, but watching it is like watching a, a little bit of a little movie. Um, so yeah, I recommend that whether you're alone or if you have a partner who would watch you play but wouldn't want to play themselves. If you both want to play, then I would recommend Swords of Ditto. That is basically like a Game Boy Legend of Zelda game. It's a dungeon crawler. You um, you spawn in a, in a randomly generated map. It's got a cutesy art style. The, the whole shtick of it is that you're basically like really young elementary school kids and you're imagining this world and the items you get are all like clever things. Like there's a yo-yo and, uh, you know, paper airplanes and like those are your weapons. All your items are things you might find on a playground or at a school. Um, but you navigate this world, you find and beat dungeons to fight a final boss. You can either uh, make it difficult and go straight to the boss, or you can complete all the dungeons and then go to the boss. Um, it's not too difficult. I, I don't remember if you can choose the difficulty setting, but um, it's just a real chill experience. Uh, my girlfriend kind of well, she likes that game a lot, and I think that that is her first introduction to any sort of, like, 2D, I guess. It's not really 2D, but it's it's kind of isometric. Uh, that's the first dungeon crawler she'd ever played like that. Uh, she likes Breath of the Wild because, of course, she does, because that game's awesome. <laughs> um, but, this, but Swords of Ditto really seems like a good co-op way to be introduced to that genre. So if you think you would like this game, listener and you have a partner uh, who would be open to something like that, I really think that's a great introduction, not only to the genre, but to casual co-op experiences. Because even if your partner's not very good, that's okay. It's not going to be a big problem. Yeah, it's not as punishing as like um, Four Swords Adventures, or not, not, not even that one, the, um, the one with three, Triforce Heroes mm -hmm. on the oh, DS. Yeah. That one was not forgiving at all. It was like, if you don't do this right, <laughs> then you fail. Yep. 
Uh, and then you, think you think just a, a devolve into game. chucking each other. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I remember that I, I took Swords of Ditto to my family, one of my family get-togethers uh, a few years ago. And I, I think the game's only two-player. I'm pretty sure it's only two-player. Uh, but we passed around the controls for a while. And then me and my cousin, we both realized, like, everybody else kind of wanted to go play board games. But he and I really wanted to keep playing. And we played that, like, at family whatever holiday we played that game for six hours we just played the hell out of it and uh the the more you level up before you go to the boss the easier the boss is going to be well we showed up at the final boss and we didn't even break a sweat <laughs> <laughs> like we were like well the game seems to be hyping it up we want to make sure that we can do it and then we got to the boss and we were just like oh we did it <laughs> first try <laughs> oh my goodness so oh, wow. I didn't realize that's... <laughs> 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 I didn't realize it's even uh, on mobile. So that's oh, everywhere. Really? You can get it on Game Pass. You can get it on Android or iOS devices mm -hmm. for six bucks. Jeez. Yeah, that's well, awesome. that's, a, that's another Devolver digital game. That that's uh, in fact. I mean, they do not miss. Is Sayonara they Wild really Hearts a? Please don't tell me it is. I, would I be feel like, like it is. But... I mean, it's got dope yeah. music, which. It really does. I just, I just, I feel like digital or Devolver Digital is like taking over the world now. Right. <laughs> oh, they are. They are. Uh, I love it. Okay. Love it. Sayonara Wild Hearts is not Devolver, so I want to give them credit. It's uh, Annapurna Interactive and I Am 8 Bit Inc. But Annapurna, Annapurna also so kills familiar. it. Yeah. They do a lot of great stuff. Could you name something else that they've done? I'm trying to think of. Let me pull this up right now. It's like one of those bugs in your brain that's just like, if you uh, don't remember, it's uh, going to kill you. Flower. Uh, this <gasps> this says Outer Wilds, uh, What Remains of Edith Finch. Oh, a little Donut game County. called Donut County. <laughs> <laughs> what do you know? Oh, they did Donut County too? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I sure didn't I know need, that. I need Dee Dee and Annapurna to get together and make something. I wonder what that, <laughs> I wonder what that would do. Now, again, Annapurna published a lot of these, so they, they didn't develop oh, okay, those, but okay, still okay. like they're yeah they're amazing yeah it's funny thomas that you talk about sign wild hearts because that is actually a game that i've watched bowser play yeah um i just walked in one day into the living room and i just saw a whole bunch of like technicolor <laughs> pop goodness going on and i was like what the heck is this right and he was like he was like surfing on a motorcycle <laughs> like yep. and, stuff, and like this techno music was playing and i was like sit <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> I just watched them play that whole thing and it I just love that it, it's really casual, but also has enough like completionist stuff in it. Like there's the three levels of completion, like the three stars or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then like all the hidden tarot cards that you can collect. So it really is something for everyone and a, a nice little simple package. Yeah, because uh, like you said of, of difficulties, yeah, there's the three stars. You can complete the level and move on. If you get one star, you can get up to three stars. And there are a bunch of... Uh, there are a bunch of things that you could probably only get once you've seen the level once. Like you'll do something and you'll be like, oh, I have to go to the right here. And then when you go to the right, you'll see something and be like, oh, I could have gone to the left and then I get a special hmm. thing there. So then you replay it and then, you know, you can go for the three stars if you want. Um, but it's definitely, that's an option, but you never really feel obligated to do that. I always feel like that's so rude. Like when you take a route and then you like can see something that you could have gotten if you went the other way and mm -hmm. <laughs> you're like passing by and it's just like, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, that's you, that's one game I still need to pick up. Uh, yeah. Uh, as far as the, the stuff on my list for Valentine's day, um, I'll go ahead and start with Gris, um, because that is entirely a solo experience. It's, Something that I feel like everybody needs to, to play through, they'll get something different out of it uh, with each play. Just like Celeste, emotionally, uh, it's one of those things that it, it can hit you whether whether you are um, whether you want the, the themes of depression or loss or isolation. It kind of covers all of those things uh, in this, this beautiful atmosphere. It's not an in-depth story, but you you feel it in different ways. Uh, just the the use of color and this amazing amazing watercolor uh, art style throughout. It's a relatively simple game uh, with very little 
to actually do gameplay wise but gris is an experience and it's it's another short title it's about three to four hours um a very light puzzling uh and just this art that the art and music that hits you in such a deep and impactful way it's it's never the same for each person but i cannot recommend it any higher it's one of my favorite games over the last few years and it's it hits you in the feels so hard <laughs> uh, i don't think that there's anybody out there that could play through the whole thing and not be emotional afterwards um and then snipper clips is my pick is that, is that for a game if you're looking you're for like, hug me <laughs> <laughs> like for sure i i sat it down and i just had the uh the start screen on for a while i was like that that was beautiful that was something else um snipper clips is my pick for co-op <laughs> Uh, you can actually play up to five people, but, you know, if that's your thing. Um, oh, we've got... Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's got a really perfect two-player experience, though, for sure. Um, very Again, very light puzzles. Uh, it, some of them are kind of tough, just because of the, the mechanics of your... Uh, I forget what they're officially called, but your little shape characters. Um, you have to clip them. You clip each other as partners. Uh, to make each other into the perfect shapes to get certain jobs done. And it's so much fun, uh, whether that's um, trying to maneuver a basketball into a goal by shaping your partner into uh, a cone of sorts, um, or a, the the opposite of that. Um, <laughs> it's just super fun. You have to see it to, to understand what's going on, but Sniffer Clips on Switch is just... Uh, a hell of a good time, uh, even for people that aren't used to uh, puzzlers. Uh, everybody needs to to try it out. Mm -hmm. uh, Isn't that and... a launch title too? Like, didn't it come it out? It is. Yeah, it? yeah. It came out with the Switch, strong. and you can. I think you can get the physical copy for thirty bucks, but it's normally, I believe, twenty on the eShop, and it's got some DLC. Uh, it's got it. It's got over sixty levels. It's got plenty of. Uh, replayability for sure uh about a year ago well basically exactly a year ago i went with uh my girlfriend one of our best friends and a few others to mexico for the first time which was great uh we flew down there we're down there for the super bowl uh had probably the worst hangover of my life uh and then <laughs> flew home and um on both flights and a bunch of times in between uh when we were just chilling during the day when we were exhausted uh, we played Snipper Clips a bunch, and that was a great, chill, like almost a team building exercise because the challenges like aren't too tough. Well, they can be. I mean, they're puzzles; so you got to figure them out. Uh, but that was a great vacation game to play with somebody. Uh, so, oh, couple yeah. or not, that is a primo co-op experience. <laughs> uh, just when you get to the egg levels. That's that's where you decide on the relationship. It's like, are we gonna are we gonna continue with this? <laughs> yep. <laughs> All the egg levels are so hard. Um, uh, beyond that, uh, I'm gonna go back to Haven uh, for a little bit of both the single player and the co-op. Uh, I haven't played it co-op yet, but uh, there is a two player version of it because the whole point of Haven is that you're two uh, lovers that left their home planet um, because of kind of the politics of the situation as well as the general atmosphere so uh it's it's a very dystopian uh society that they have it's where everybody is uh taken to the matchmaker uh you've you've heard this in like a million uh young adult books but everybody is taken to the matchmaker uh to basically like the giver they they get their their roles, their positions uh, for, for jobs, and they get their mate for life, so to speak. Um, and they, these two characters wanted to, to, you know, throw all that away. They, they found that they loved each other enough um, that they, they needed to escape that. Uh, and it's, it's a hell of an exploration of a relationship. Part of that is because of the, the style of gameplay uh, for one, uh, you're in first-person mode a couple times throughout the game to um, walk around what's called the nest, which is your little ship that you take care of, um, where you you eat, you cook things, you 
shower, uh, you sleep, you chat with your partner. Um, it's all this character building stuff. Uh, and then gameplay also transitions to um, this very light platforming where you're zooming across the landscape and it's kind of a collect-a-thon where you're gathering, uh, you're harvesting fruits and seeds and things like that to survive um, because you do have to cook your own meals and you have to keep up your your stamina um, How much of because the game, you, you lose energy. How much of the game yeah. is like a sim where, all right, got to make sure I sleep, got to make sure I eat? <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> and that's, that's kind of what... what uh, took me out of it a little bit at the beginning of the game uh, because there's a lot of great visual novel uh, back and forth. The dialogue is perfect and all too realistic um, for a relationship. Yeah. <laughs> you get you get to make choices. Um, it's got this beautiful art, so you have each character uh, on a side of the screen um, talking to each other. You get to make choices um, of what each other says, and I think there are a couple different endings to the game. Uh, that it does actually go towards, depending on your decisions. Um, it's just extremely well written, though, and it it does devolve into um, this young adult, like steamy romance at times. But it's it's a really good time. It's really funny, and really just the the mixture of the visual novel side of things and the gameplay sort of thing. It. It could turn some people off, but then you you realize how much you start to love these characters after a while, and, and you really want to see their end. <laughs> yeah. right. And then they go take a shower. <laughs> yeah. You know what? <laughs> it is rated M, uh, and I honestly oh, really? didn't realize that until I got to a certain point in the game, uh -oh. where your character is actually naked, kind of, and um, <laughs> there's there's a moment towards the end that's really funny, where you're both sitting on top of your spaceship, uh, naked after you did stuff. Um, it's it's just this hilarious thing. Like they're they're talking about why would you be naked right here? Um, the characters are just going back and forth as to what just happened and and what they're <laughs> feeling. And it's it's so engrossing uh, that once it got to parts that I was like, oh, maybe this is closer to the end, right? This is closer to the end. And every time that happened, I was like, oh shit, this is ten hours in. This is twelve hours in. This is fifteen hours in. Mm -hmm. Um. And I, like I said before, I I finished it just about twenty hours in, um, and I I felt so much better um, about the whole experience because it was it was very artistically done, well written, but it was also very very poignant as far as how a relationship uh, is seen from a different perspective. But you're actually playing both parts throughout the entire game, mm -hmm. and it's it's just a really fun exploration and really beautiful. I really cannot recommend it enough. <laughs> okay. Try it. What an apology like now. My goodness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and it, like I said before, it's on it's on Game Pass. You can play it uh, via the cloud or PC or console, I believe. I think it's on all three that way. Um, and then it just came out on Switch today. And I think it should play pretty well on Switch performance-wise. Um, it wasn't too taxing on Xbox, but... I will say there there were a few bugs that also detracted from my experience, but again, obviously not enough to stop me completely. <laughs> you can't just call every fight in a relationship a bug, Carlos. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. But if my screen goes black in the middle of a save, and then when I come back, it's not saved. Oh, that, that just might makes you knock your eyes bug. out. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. It's made me look back. Yeah, Black that's, screen. Uh, that's, that's having an argument while you're drunk and you wake up and you can't remember why you were mad. <laughs> so, uh, Devi, uh, what are your picks for V Day? Um, mine are not nearly as like emotionally explorative as as yours are. Um, I just love how you have like these really deep introspective titles, and then snipper clips. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. It's just the way it is. I mean, it do be like that sometimes. <laughs> Um, I originally had, and this is because of like my personal experience, I uh, originally had um, Streets of Rage 4 and Double Dragon Neon, which are like, you know, beat-em-ups full of violence. Right. <laughs> uh, but those are the kinds of games that Bowser and I like to play together because it's like they're really simple, they're really arcadey, they're really funny, especially Double Dragon Neon. It's like super duper like 80s, um, 
which I'm gonna call it. What do you, you know what I mean? It's just eighties. <laughs> that's that's the most succinct way I can describe it. But then I was just like, that really, I don't think would apply to a lot of other people. But by all means, get those games if you if you and your partner or you by yourself like to play beating maps. It's one of my favorite genres. Um, definitely, if you need to vent your feelings about the holiday, you know, yeah. take them out on some some procedurally generated generic bad guys <laughs> one and two, <laughs> and the sure. occasional dominatrix with a whip, you know. Hey. Because they're in both. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, no. Um, on here I have um, Overcooked, which is just, if you've ever played any kind of party game at all, Overcooked is like this lovely little microcosm of joy and frustration. Because <laughs> there's always a meme in the relationship where it's just like cooking together is either the most romantic experience that you can have or the most frustrating. Because some, oh, yeah. like, some people like their kitchen space, you know, get out my kitchen. Mm -hmm. Um, Bowser and I actually cook together all the time now, which is really fun because we'll both be, we're not like in each other's way, but we're like chopping up ingredients. Like he'll chop up the meat and I'll chop up the veggies because apparently that's how the nuclear family goes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll, you know, come together and, and do like the ghost experience on the, on the pans and the skillets and everything. So it's a very risky hand motion. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, Overcooked is a lot of fun. For those who haven't played it, you're basically a bunch of chefs. Chefs or chefs? Is it like a V? I think it actually is chefs. Uh, is when it? it's okay. plural, it's sheaf. <laughs> Chef I? <laughs> you are a bunch of cooks <laughs> yeah. in the kitchen or wherever, actually. There's a whole bunch of different maps, like in a dungeon. Yeah, um, you're, you're occasionally in a kitchen. You are occasionally in a kitchen, but there are stovetops and, and sinks and stuff everywhere, and you're preparing a dish as... Um, ordered by the customers. It's kind of like a Diner Dash game. Yeah. If you've ever played Diner Dash, this is basically party version Diner Dash. Yeah. And um, it's just a really simple, fun, crazy, zany game because you can get in each other's way. Like if it's versus, it's like, co what's the word that they say? Competitive? Oh, right? yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you're either working together on the same team or you can like mess each other up by pushing each other off the map physically. You know, murder. The crux of every relationship. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> or, you know, getting the job done together. It's a lot of fun. Um, very cutesy potato graphics. I would recommend it. I really don't know the pricing on it right now. I do know that Overwatch, or Overcooked, to Overwatch, Overcooked, too, <laughs> um, recently went on sale. I don't know if it's on sale anymore, but you can get it on, I'm pretty sure, every platform. I yeah, you can get it everywhere. Um, and I think Overcooked 2 is on Game Pass right now. Uh, but then there's also the the series, uh, the Series X, the next gen consoles have it as well. So they have their own remastered version. I'm oh, fine. I wonder if it's in like 4K, because you know they try to I do everything is, in 4K yeah. on there. Like Fortnite was in 4K. I saw an ad for that, <laughs> and I was like, this looks better than real life. <laughs> 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 I need resolution like this in my eyeballs, like for real. <laughs> exactly. This is the future. Yeah. My bionic implants. <laughs> Overcooked one or two, you really can't go wrong with, uh, and two, they add the the whole throwing of ingredients, and that makes for so much extra hilarity uh, and chaos. That's it's the best, especially if you like start throwing stuff at each other, it bounces off, and everything <laughs> else starts catching on fire. Uh, yep. That will really be a true test to your relationship. <laughs> uh, my favorite is to just pick up the fire extinguisher and spin. Just spin and spin and spin oh, yeah. and spin. <laughs> you sure not gonna like throw it at and throw it at your partner there? Getting in the way in the kitchen? Do you need your uh, kitchen space? You know, I've never played the co competitive uh before. But honestly the co op can be pretty competitive on its own. <laughs> They're like you've been spinning that fire extinguisher for like ten seconds and we've got all these the the, the potatoes are on fire. Like what are you doing? I'm like, oh, I didn't know I'm supposed to actually use this thing. Um, yeah, I've Thomas, like it's, it's your job to plate everything, and you're just not getting it done. Yeah, we well, don't I need mean, any more onions. It's like, it's like the it's like the flaming Alaska, but it's flaming potato. You know, <laughs> it's, it's just being co like creative, coming up with some new stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, otherwise, I have on here Animal Crossing: New Horizons, which, as we all know, has been our savior for yep. the past you know couple of years. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> It feels like a couple years, at least. <laughs> <laughs> it does feel like that. Um, but it's really fun because it's like a pastoral, peaceful, relaxing experience that you can lose yourself in 
Um, or you can, you know, get your partner and visit each other's islands, send each other's presents. Um, Baz and I used to send each other letters like all the time. Like when I first got the game, he would watch me play it and he'd be like, oh man, I wish I were playing this with you. But you can only have like one island per Switch, mm -hmm. you know, and you can't play co-op together on the same system. Yeah. So eventually he caved and he bought it um, himself and he sunk so many hours into it, like more than I did it initially. <laughs> um, it was crazy how much, because Animal Crossing has never been, like Life Sims have never been his thing at all. Um... But I think what he really liked was the ability to really make it your own. And that was something that New Horizons got right this time. They noticed in, in, in New Leaf that they were like, oh, everybody's making their own paths and everything. Everyone's making their own finishers. Okay, well, let's just take that to level 15, you know? Yeah. So you can customize everything. Um, you can shape the land and the sea itself <laughs> and like make it really, really your island. Um, but it's really fun to play with, with your partner. Especially, like I said, sending each other presents and everything. It's nice to wake up and find something in your mailbox. Mm -hmm. um, from Or a friend. Or, you know, somewhere in between. We, whatever you do. You know, <laughs> we, we don't judge here. <laughs> uh, it's, it's just such a pleasant experience. And, of course, they celebrate all the holidays. Valentine's Day will be coming up in Animal Crossing New Horizons, um, you know, on the day. And there's going to be, like, fun stuff you can collect with that. You know, July. June and July is, like, the wedding month, so... There's a lot of ways to celebrate your love or lack thereof in in Animal Crossing. Mm -hmm. So very highly recommend, um, even if you're alone, especially if you're alone. But yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's... <laughs> yeah, that game, just, that game just is a Just send vibe. yourself, yeah, just send yourself some, like, fake uh, bikinis and all the, all the lewd designs that you can and see what you can come up with, yeah. Oh my gosh, just it's mail a yourself time. a bunch of peaches. <laughs> exactly. Yep. Um, you actually can mail your, you feed yourself a letter. So oh, really? you can send yourself, yeah, you can go to the post, or not the post office, now it's the the airport, which is where you mail all your all your presents and stuff. And you can either mail it to a villager that lives on your island, um, a friend, which you need to know online to do, which is another thing, um, <laughs> or your future self. So you set a date on the letter. And then they'll be like, okay, well, we'll mail it. And then when that date arrives, you'll get that letter with whatever you have enclosed. That's cool. In the mail. Yeah. So if you want to send yourself a time capsule like 10 years from now, I trust, like, it, it will be there. <laughs> or, you know, some some blue bikinis. Yeah. And all that. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> and my very last one in here is the relationship tester to test all relationships. It is Super Mario Party for the Nintendo Switch. <laughs> If you have ever played a Mario Party game with your friends, you don't have those friends anymore. I, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, it's, it's it's a lot of fun to get in there, and it's almost competitive, almost, because nowadays, getting stars is like easier than ever. And sometimes, some the way that some people play, you know, you don't steal stars from each other, um, and things like that. You only like attack the computers. You never, um, attack each other. And so that's like the com the competitive. And then also it's got the 2v2 games where sometimes you'll be on the same team as your your friends or your partner or whatever. I do wish that it had that same kind of spice that the old Mario Party games had. Everything is so homogenized, I feel. Yeah. It's... The gameplay is definitely watered down. Yeah, it's, it's smoothed down edges. Is When I played that, it's exactly what you're describing. I was like, man, I wanted, yeah, I wanted some more spice with this. <laughs> like, I get it's Mario Party, but it's not a party without drama. You need the drama. Right. <laughs> yeah, the the partner mode is really good, but it's it's very few games that actually hit the mark. But Slapparazzi, Slapparazzi is the game. Yes. Oh, okay. You're talking about in the game. I was like, what game is this? But you're talking yes. about a mini game. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, the mini game Slap Razzi, That is the truest form of competition in Super Mario Party, <laughs> in, in my experience. It is so hardcore and it's great. For yeah. the uninitiated, Slap Razzi is a mini game where you, like, there's a photographer and um, you are competing to be the center of attention in the photograph. Oh, so that's right. It's a game that's right up my alley. Um, <laughs> <laughs> You know, I love to be the, the center of attention there. So uh, let me just... <laughs> but I really liked that they heard the feedback from uh, Mario Party 9 and 10, where it's like, we don't like being in the vehicle. 
get us out of this vehicle. Mm -hmm. We don't like moving together. We like doing our own thing. And then they separated everyone in Super Mario Party. So you can do your individual movement again. But the, the boards are so much smaller. I feel like that was mostly the reason for that. They didn't need a vehicle because everything is so much smaller. Yeah. I mean, that's one of my, my drawbacks to it. I, I want the big sprawling boards. I want the spice. You know, the mini games are, are popping. I love the mini games. <laughs> But everything else just kind of falls a little bit flat for me. Yeah. And so, uh, besides the lovely Valentine's Day stuff that uh, that we're all going to be playing uh, for various reasons, um, we did want to uh, shout out Ya Boy for continuing uh, uh, with us on Patreon for Yaboy! a third month. Um, and and that's actually that is... his name. We're not talking about Chris, <laughs> who's not here. <laughs> um, we we are <laughs> right. We are very appreciative to you, boy, for uh, joining us on Patreon. And again, uh, the shout-outs on our podcasts are one of the perks that uh, a patron does have. So if you're interested, uh, you know where to go in the uh, description of this video or description of the podcast. Either one, you can find our Patreon link there. And then we, we do have a, a little bit of an update uh, from Thomas. Yeah, instead of... Uh... Instead of a community spotlight this week, I wanted to talk about some updates for Party Invite, uh, which you guys can expect from us. Uh, this is coming out, uh, we're recording this on the 4th, uh, and today our new feature, All A Card, came out. It is a card battler uh, feature where Chris and I are going to go explore the depths of card games. We, uh, I've played Slay the Spire, and so that's on deck, but the first game that we played... <laughs> On deck. Uh, <laughs> ah! um, man, that's I gotta save that one. Gotta save that one. Uh, we played Monster Train. Monster Train, I thought was a, gonna be a knockoff Slave Aspire, and it's not. That game is awesome, and it's very different from Slave Aspire. There are things it has in common, um, but we are Chris and I are exploring together this whole genre. I've already played Hearthstone for a while, uh, but we've got a bunch of things lined up um, because we apparently love this genre uh you'll probably see nerd meat pop in he's uh one of our mods if you're not familiar you should check him out on twitch nerd meat underscore um yeah monster train is uh something you're gonna see more of on the personal channels uh of me and chris as well as party invite but anyway that's all a card our new feature um we also have a bunch of new roles on our discord so if you want to get involved um, we have more people playing than ever, and I'm so excited about it. We have a bunch of roles on there. I'm not going to read off what all of those are. Um, but we added Don't Starve, Killer Queen Black, Deep Rock Galactic, and State of Decay 2 as roles on our Discord. So if you would like to group up, it's very easy to find groups because now um, it's not just one or two people playing. We've got three or four or five people playing each of these games so if you're trying to squat up um keep an eye on our discord we're just we're trying to make it easy for people to just fall into a game instead of having to plan a whole bunch of stuff with a whole bunch of people um we've got a lot of people playing together now so more than yeah, ever our, our killer queen black knight was like really fun yeah that was it great. Out, like really well we had five of us uh including the three of us and two other uh two friends and Based on the feedback we've gotten from people, we we have like almost a dozen people interested in playing now. So I'm excited to fill up those eight man uh, custom lobbies. Those are really yes. good. Times. So yeah, Y'all more, check out that pod, more than ever, check out our Discord. Uh, it's popping. And uh, also t tomorrow, as a recording, I'm sorry, uh, we are trying out our first trivia night, which uh, Shanny Pack, who if you've tuned into our uh, a bunch of our streams. He is hosting. Shanny Pack uh, has played Don't Starve with me. Um, he played State of the K with uh, me and Lord Chrome the other day. But he's going to host trivia like he used to in the real world when I first met him. And uh, we're going to we're gonna use Discord plus his Twitch channel to run that. We might use a Google Doc. We're going to finalize this before uh, it goes live. But that's our very first one and hopefully our first of many. So if the idea of video game trivia, like you might have found in the real world before... Um, if that sounds exciting to you, give us all your feedback. Even if you're not able to make this one, um, we want to know what you're looking for for something like that. So uh, please holler at us and let's play together. I'm really excited for this. 
<laughs> it's definitely going to be a good time. So cool. So that's a whole bunch of stuff we've got going. Um, and then, yeah, keep an eye out on our brunch specials. You'll see more of those on Saturday and Sunday mornings. Let me tell everyone where they can find us um, on all, across all of our various platforms. Uh, Never. Um, okay. If you... <laughs> <laughs> Look, yeah, help me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but no, if you go to linktr.ee slash party invite, you'll be able to find every link to our platforms that we have. So we're on YouTube, we're on Twitter, we're on Instagram, we are on Twitch, we are on Facebook, and um, we are on Discord, which actually, do we have a link to our Discord in there? Because if not, we should definitely put it in there. We definitely do because it's discord.gg slash 168529G784. Don't type well, it. No, it's the letters are letters now. Oh, never mind. Never mind. You, uh, you got my hope. You raised my hands and passed them quite expertly. If I was able to memorize that, like that near replicate game with like the fifteen digits in it, oh man, that's that's the business. See, I thought you had it pulled up, big brain, and you were just reading off the page, and I was just like, "Oh, big brain." Uh, Nope, don't be like uh, poor big brain Thomas. Um, Yeah, go to that link tree link, and you'll be able to find everything. (laughs) Oh, and also we're on Spotify and Apple. Pod, podcasts, whatever their feature is called. <laughs> just, just go to anchor.fm and, and you'll have it. Yeah, anchor.fm <laughs> a- anchor. slash party invite. That's right. Cool. We are everywhere, all over the place, so definitely check us out. Uh, if you're hearing this or watching this, either way, give us some feedback for sure. We would love to hear it. Uh, and if anybody, anybody have anything else? Uh, no, no, I'm all good. Yep. All right, well. I guess we'll see y'all later. All right. Bye. Party hardy. Bye.